everybody, it is Romania Black, and we are on episode eight, my lucky number, of Free Rin Beyond Journey's End. I'm, I'm a little bit excited because it's my lucky number, a little bit excited about that being episode eight, but also because of last episode was amazing. <laughs> I really loved the last episode. It was so good. We've got introduced into these demons, aka velociraptors of this world, and they're just doing any method they can to trick the humans and get the maximum amount gathered together so they can just wipe them out. And we have this demon they're working for called Aura the Guillotine. Very interesting. We've not seen Aura officially yet. Um, and then Freerun just, Freerun just wants to just go on her merry way, read her granny smut novels, have a good time, pick up mementos of her long lost friends that have gone since. And, and these demons just aren't letting her do it. And so we have Drot, who has seemingly picked a fight with this grandmama, which I think is a bad mistake on his part. And so we'll just see how that goes, right? But I've got some comments before we dive into this. Um, we were talking in the Discord about this series, and it hit me that it's really funny. We I've been talking about the the further we get into Freerun, the more we see of Freerun's personality, and the more we encounter her like emotions, and and we could start like peel back the layers of her vulnerability, and that's really cool and everything. And it's so funny because now we see this demon that on the surface is expressing all this emotion, but then under the surface, there's nothing there. It's all just a front. It's a facade. And with free rent, it's real. And it's like, ah, oh, it's just, it's such a great contrast to have in the story. Um, so a couple of comments. K.A. notes that Stark's voice actor is actually um, the voice actor for Young Asklad in Vinland Saga, which is pretty cool, but also plays Makoto Edamura from Great Pretender, I did not recognize that voice. That's awesome. And also plays Louie from Moriarty the Patriot and Longa from Skate. The Longa threw me off because I was like, Longa's voice and Stark's voice are not similar to me at all. I would not have imagined that. So that's kind of mind blowing. So who knew? Who knew? And I love Skate the Infinity. So I'm like, wow, the main character's voice is Stark. That's pretty cool. Um, o Oscar, Ber Oscar Bergine. Uh, 1733, hope I said that right, um, talks about the cube animation in episode five and saying that it calls back to a style called Udipon cubes after the animator that works for Bones, Yutaka Nakamura. Um, and I recognized it from My Hero Academia that they've worked on through Bones, but also uh, Mob Psycho 100, which I love that series, um, that I could also see the animation style going through them. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, Nago points out that Stark and Fern grew up isolated from people from their own age group. And yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't know fully about Stark. We know that he's been with, um, Ison from an early age, but he's also enacted, interacted with people from the village, things like that for a couple of years. Um, but he doesn't seem to have a lot of people in his own age friend group. So yeah, it's kind of harder to... Um, communicate and interact with people like that when you're not around it. Um, I had friends growing up that were raised by their grandparents and they had a very different kind of um, etiquette and way of interacting with people because of that. Um, and plus, you know, you think about the pandemic and quarantine and how it's impacted the way we socialize with people. Yeah, there is kind of an awkwardness between Fern and Stark, but it's like one that you can actively see in the series. They're working past and getting closer. And, and I think that's really, really cool. Um, then we have I Swallow Apple Seeds that talked about in episode six. The animation was done by Yuchiro Fukushi, who did a One Punch Man from season one, which is great. Um, also has worked on Seraph of the End, Attack on Titan seasons one through three, and The Great Pretender as well. And I was like, well, imagine all these connections, right? No wonder I like it. Because <laughs> I like all those series as well. So that was pretty cool. And then um, Alessi Kali, along with Ogami uh, 7661, they talked about some translation uh, things of German, which after reading this comment, I'm like, I feel really fortunate that I don't know German because I think some of it is a little spoilery. Like if you can read German, that's kind of, and I feel like maybe 
people were talking about in some of the comments early on, like, why was this Japanese author using German names? And I'm like, well, it's kind of one of those scenarios where if your prime audience can't translate it right off the bat, they have to go look it up on their own, then you can kind of get away with some cool symbolism with names and your audience isn't going to even realize it. Like, for example, I'm watching this series. I'm an English speaking audience. I can't speak German. So with these name meanings, if someone didn't translate them or if I didn't go look them up, I would not understand that extra layer. But then when you do go look it up, it gives it an extra layer and it's really cool. So I'm like, oh, okay. So for example, um, Ing, like Ing Road means tight road, which explains them going up this little tight road there. Also could connect to a tight rope maybe. Um, aura just means aura. So there's no, no special translation there, but draught means wire and it used the wire to kill the night. So you're like, okay, that is explanatory. Um, and then the one that got me was Lugner. Lugner means liar <laughs> in Germany. In German, I was like, ah, ah, yes, that, that would have gave it away, wouldn't it have? Mm -hmm. And then um, Linny just means like straight line, like line. I thought that was interesting. So I don't know what their ability is, if it's tied to draughts or not. They had like a little energy ball, so we'll see how that is. Um, and then uh, Ogami7661 pointed out that graph in graph granat, um, graph just means count in German. And I was like, oh, okay, so it's not their actual name. They don't have like an illiterate name. It's just graph granat is count granat. So there we go. But I really appreciate all of those comments. I think that's awesome. I uh, thank you all so much for giving them. I'm super, super excited. Now, Alessi Kali also said that Aura gaining power, they brought this up, that Aura gained their powers back 28 years ago. And that kind of coincides with the moment that Himmel died. So is there a connection there? And I thought about it because on the surface you would think, oh, well, when Himmel died, she started gaining her power back because she, was, she couldn't be worried about Himmel coming after her at that point. But I'm like... Himmel was an old ass man when he died, you know? Um, I could kind of understand if she was waiting for Himmel to die so that she wouldn't be threatened by him and he was like still like in the prime of his life when he passed and then she was like, oh, well, he's out of the picture. Let me regain my power. But Himmel was this old man. So, but then again, they are demons and they're not really necessarily as intelligent as humans. They're just pretending to be. So in her mind... Her thinking that Himmel still being alive meant she couldn't attack. She may not have understood the nuances of him getting old and not being able to attack because of it. And maybe that's why Aysen doesn't travel with them because he doesn't want to reveal to the demons that he's not actually as strong as they once believed him to be. So, so that's something too, like, you know, word of mouth and legacy, people believe that these party members still being alive means that they're dangerous, even when we, the audience, know that's not necessarily the case. Because they see Freerun, and Freerun is still as strong as ever, if not stronger. So, I don't know. I think that's interesting. So, I, I hadn't thought about it that way. But yeah, that could be why, from a demon's perspective, they're not, they're not realizing that he's aged. They're just like, oh, he's still alive. We can't attack again. And then once he dies, they're like, okay, now we can. So, hmm. I don't know, y'all. I don't know. But what I do know is I'm really excited to dive into this episode. Um, special thanks again to Anthony. My internet was acting funky today and I was like, Ugh, I don't want to risk it. So I downloaded the file while it was still good and was going to use that today. So thank you, Anthony, for letting me get the file for this episode. I really, really appreciate it. So without being said, without saying anything more, we've gone long enough. So we're going to start episode eight of Free Rin Beyond Journey's End. I'm so freaking excited. And we're going to do that here in three two, one, and let's do this. When there's something weird in your neighborhood, who are you going to call? An old ass freaking badass elf. That's who you're going to call free rent. Oh my God. Mm. Holy shit. I, I, I like how we start out this series so casually and they were like oh yeah free and her friends they went and they defeated a demon king no big deal and then you just like meander around with free Rin for a couple episodes and you're like oh well that must not have been a big task or ordeal and then you get to these demons and you're like oh these demons are really dangerous um they seem like a threat and then free Rin's like bitch i've been doing this for centuries and you're like ah! so yes so um yes I, 
that the way that this series is able to execute literally execute the demons but execute the ways in which freerin fights and the ways that she interacts with people is kind of incredible and I'm kind of in love with it. I it's it does something that's so fresh for a series because I'm used to like like the moment that she was facing Drot at the very beginning. There was this big swell of music, but instead of it like just invading your senses and battering them with like all this bass and all this sound, it was kind of like underscored and sort of understated and just kind of like buried under the surface. But you could still hear it. It gave it that tension, but it just it matched the tone of the series, and you're like. Oh, I, I'm really excited for her versus Aura, it seems, in the next episode. Like, Freerun and Aura is going to be an interesting... Aura looks like... I'm sorry. Oren's design looks like a cross between something from Seraph of the End and something from Seven Deadly Sins. <laughs> and I only know a little bit of Seven Deadly Sins. Although, to be fair, if it was Seven Deadly Sins, girl would have like a E-cup boob compared to like looking as demure as she does. I love her hairstyle, though. It looks very good, but... Interesting. I like that in this series, nothing is what it seems. And characters like Freerun, who seem like so quiet and demure and nonchalant, are actually terrifying. I get that vibe from Aura. I'm sure Aura is going to be a problem. But yeah, everything just, they all, and I love how too, even uh, both uh, Finn, Lin, Linny, Linny and Lugner, even both of them, they're so nonchalant, like all this, they're like, hey, could you leave? Because they're trying to imitate people, right? They, they don't want to show emotion. They're, they're beasts imitating people. So they're trying to maintain their calm because that's what they've been used to being around in this peaceful village as envoys. And it's like, ah, that's so crazy. I, wow, the whole scene with Drott and Drott showing like some arrogance though. Like Drott being like, oh, I'm one of the executioners. I feel like Drott's one of the younger ones, if not the youngest. And so they have to go first. And... I like the draw. It's like, well, you don't seem strong. And, and Freerun's like, well, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you say that. And so then he really underestimates her. And her just standing there with her neck protected, just glaring down at him, being like, I was giving you the benefit of the doubt. I was asking if negotiations were over. I was seeing if this was going to work out. And you answered all my questions. I'm like, oh, my God. Also, I got such like connections to Doctor Who this episode, such connections with Shi Lian from uh, Heaven Officials Blessing with Free Rin. I'm like, yes, all of the connections. And the, I was living for them. She's like, what an interesting spell. She's like, I really want that wire spell so I can never use it again. And then just like, like it was nothing. She just, she's like, I can't do anything about the wire. But she just like, all she does is like take her hand once and just, and then just hand gone. Like it was nothing. Girl. Girl, just it was so clean. The way that she just came in and was like, you shouldn't have let me have access to my hands. You really shouldn't have done that. Because then she just kills him and that's it. And then boop. And I like how Freerun is like methodical where she's just like, okay, uh, one demon down. Like I anticipated. Gotta go get the other demons. But she sees the knight, and I like that she's like, oh, shit, the guard's dead, so I need to I need to leave. Like, her thought process is very logical. We've talked about um, Freerun being neurodivergent, and I you can see that. You can see the wheels turning in her head, and she's like, mm-hmm, now I need to do this and this and that. And she explains it to Fern and Stark later, which I really appreciate that the show goes through the motions with that. It, it's really, really well done. So, yeah. So anyway, get back to this uh, opening scene here with uh, <laughs> Stark and Fern at the burger joint eating. I I feel like Fern has inherited some of Freerun's traits in that she's very nonchalant. Like, we got this. We're good to go. We're, we're, we're set. Like, she very much is more like Freerun than I think Fern realizes her personality is. And it almost makes me wonder if Hater took in Fern partially because he saw Freerun in her. I mean, I'm that's it's too early to say for that, but I feel like there's a connection there, and maybe Hater saw something in her and was like, "Hmm, you remind me of somebody I knew," and then that's why he kept her. Um, but I like that Stark is like, "How can you eat at a time like this? Aren't you terrified?" And she's like, "Yeah, I'm scared." But and then there's that idea that towns like this are peaceful, 
And that's why the food tastes so good. And Fern's like, yeah, if we don't do something, this town isn't going to be peaceful anymore. We need, we have the capability to save it. We need to go do our part. I I just love Stark and Fern's interactions because Stark Stark to me clearly likes her. Like Stark to me clearly likes Fern. Fern is I think oblivious, <laughs> as oblivious as Freerun is, but I think Stark really likes her. And he does a few things, like there's little things that he does like when he's trying to help her and be all dashing and then when you know, although he does do some things where he's like, "Well, you can't have any of my food. <laughs> you just, I just watch you scarf down that burger." And she's like, we really need to go. And he talks about being scared. And I like that that's part of his character. And he's like, look, he's like, I'm terrified. He's like, we don't stand a chance, especially not Lugner. He's unbelievably strong. But here's the thing. I like that we we set up this at the beginning and then it gets challenged later on and expanded upon, which we'll talk about. One thing I am glad is that Stark is not cocky. No, Stark is not that guy that's like, oh, we can take him. Let's go face head on. Because, you know, there's that anime trope where, like, the, the side party is like, oh, we got this. Don't you worry. It's like every shonen trope where they just blindly run in to face the villain and get their asses handed to them. And then it's over. And then they have to do an arc where they get stronger. No, Stark's, like, already encountered that <laughs> with the dragon. And it's, like, perpetually constantly put a trauma in his brain where he's like no I'm terrified this thing seems stronger than me but then when push comes to shove he is able to be courageous and show you know his valiance so but I am glad that Stark is not a cocky person he really isn't he's kind of dorky I love him and I wish Fern could see what we the audience see of Stark because it's really great maybe she does see it and she's just like we got a job to do we'll we'll worry about romance after we've defeated the demon king been to the veil and come back right but I like that we set up, though, the idea that Lugner is really strong. We need Freerin, and Freerin's going to challenge that here in a little bit. I wasn't expecting that, but I really, really like what they did with it. And he's like, he was only looking at Freerin because she was the strongest in the room. And then later, Stark's going to be like, no, you're going to look at me. I'm strong, too. He's like, I can't stop shaking. And so then he's like, my hands won't stop shaking. And then he like grabs a hold of the mug and like, but it spills the the juice. He's like, I spilled my drink. And it looks like I wet myself. Oh, I'm like, poor Stark. Stark can't catch a break, right? And then Fern's like, well, here, take my handkerchief, wipe it up. And at first I was like, why did they just do like a shot of him? Like just rubbing his like groin with the handkerchief. Like what was the point of that? Then it's like, okay, get your mind out of the gutter because Fern's like, I don't want the handkerchief back. You just like wiped your crotch all over with it. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, Fern, girl, <sighs> come on, girl. I just, that part was humorous. And she's like, we, it's not going to stop the party of heroes from going. We need to keep going. I like that she says the party of heroes. So she's like, look, Himmel and Freerin and Hater and Isen, they didn't stop just because it was the four of them and they were scared. They moved forward. She's like, we have to do the same. We're, we're the new party of heroes with Freerin. So we need to do our part. And Stark's like, oh, okay, fine. I guess. He's like, if I don't do it, I can't face Isen again. And I just love that he's like, here's your handkerchief. And yeah, she's like, no. <laughs> That's so dang funny. And then and then I love he's like, I'm paralyzed with fear. And she's like, oh. I just imagine that Hater had to drag Ison along for part of their journey. So when Freerun sees Fern dragging Stark along, I, I imagine Freerun's smirk is like, yeah, that happened back when we were on our mission. Isn't that cute? It, it parallels. It's like poetry. It rhymes. Although there are times where I feel like Fern is maybe a little bit more like Himmel than Hater. So, and there are times where I feel like Stark is more like Himmel than Ison. So they're kind of all like a combination. I'm curious to know if they'll get a fourth member of the party and who they will remind Freerun of. Fern is kind of an interesting mixture of Freerun and Himmel. And... Uh, Stark is kind of an interesting mixture of Himmel and Isen, and I don't really get Fern being a lot like Hater, so maybe they need somebody like Hater in their party. I, I don't know. So we are the right hand men of Aura. Would we die from just underestimating someone? I'm curious what all Finny does or Lenny does because she has this like ball, and he's like she's used to detect things, 
but Fern was able to get through her detection. So I'm curious what kind of fight she will do. But I'm also glad that the Count, he kind of saw through, he saw through the fact that Freerin left and the guard was killed. He's like, yeah, no, something seems kind of off. I feel like maybe your guy tried to start something and she finished it and left the castle, right? I'm glad that he's smart enough to kind of see through the deception. What's so creepy is the whole scene before we get to um, Lugner being able to use the blood bending. That whole scene is just, you can see the gears turning in the demon's heads as the count is talking. You can see like they're ha they had these blank expressions where you think they're not thinking about anything, but you just know inside they're being like, okay, processing what the human is saying. How do we have a response? It's kind of like they're AI. It's kind of like the demons are AI trying to figure out an adequate response to be appropriate in the situation. And it's just like, they're trying to process it fast enough and it's just not, you know, it doesn't keep up in this case, but damn. I like also that Lugner, I like there's callbacks to last episode where Lugner um, had been leaning against Freerun and he's like, yeah, Freerun didn't make an attempt to hurt the guards, so why would she now? But damn, them poor guards. Lugner having the blood bending ability, I love it. I freaking love that he's able to use the blood as a whip, as as knives, as bullets almost, as a sword. Oh. And then the fact that he like takes his hand on the blade and just like runs it down and gets the blood going and then uses it to fire at him. Oh, that whole scene was so good. And Sawabe's voice acting, I mean, it, it's Sawabe. It's absolutely incredible. His voice is just like so sensual and seductive. I'm like, no. And he's like, now that we can only fight, I'm overjoyed. Because he's a demon, right? And he's like, what are words versus swords? How do they differ? No matter what we use, the weak die. I thought that was interesting because, yeah, it's like no matter what situation, the strong is going to be the one to overcome. So the demon calling into question, like, why do we use swords? Why do we use words when swords are going to do the exact same thing? I don't know. But then the poor, poor count. I hope he lives, although I don't know. Him being struck there, struck in the kidney, I don't know. And the fact that, that Lugner can, can absorb the blood back into his system, it's crazy. And he's like, I want to figure out how to remove the defensive barrier. So meanwhile, I love that Freerin just walks past and Fern's like, hey, what you doing? And part of me is wondering, did was Freerin just going to leave town and just leave Fern and Stark to figure it out? I don't think she was, but maybe she was trying to scope out the situation or maybe she thought she'd just go take care of Aura right now and come back and be like, hey, give me a second. I'm going to go take care of the leader of this army. I'll be right back and we'll handle the other two. Don't worry. I, I wonder what Freerun was thinking and what her, you know, MO was in this moment because Fern's like, Freerun, what are we doing? And then Freerun's like, oh, hi. <laughs> and she explains the situation and she's like, look, I had to do this. I do like the other demons can sense when their own kind dies. That's interesting as well. And so then she's like, if you leave, the remaining demons are going to run wild. We have to save the town. And she's like, I need to leave. And they're like, are you really going to abandon this town? And then she's like, well, why don't you two defeat them? And on the surface, you're thinking, well, is that a joke? But no. No. It's, this is literally a teachable moment with Freerun where Freerun's like, um, you guys got this. I, these two demons that are left, she's like, it took me like two seconds to kill that one. You guys will be fine. I, I love that Freerun has not only faith in them, but she is using this as a moment being like, you're not going to be able to defend, depend on me this entire journey. That's not going to work. I've got to go do my thing. And I like that there's multiple levels to it. It's not only that Freerun wants them to get stronger. It's not only that she's testing to make sure that they can handle a situation like this because these are two demons. Freerun's going off to fight an army. They may get into a situation in the future where the situation is a lot more dire and less organized than it kind of is now. So she's like, I got to make sure you guys can keep up and handle. And plus we're going to face a demon king. So we kind of need to be on top of this. So not only that, but three, she's going to go defeat Aura to keep them from overrunning the place. So she's like, I need somebody to distract these other two demons while I'm doing that. You two are perfectly capable. 
But also, she's like, you guys remind me of my party back then. They didn't just rely upon me. We've seen Himmel and Eisen in action already in the flashbacks and doing damage. Hater, I'm sure, did something. <laughs> but she's like, look, you guys will be fine. But don't just stop and give up because something in front of you is strong. And I love that Stark's like, you make it sound so easy. We don't stand a chance against them. And Freerun's like, are you just not going to fight them because they're strong? I love that teachable moment in that where she's like, oh, so when you face a hurdle that's hard, you're just going to give up? Is that all you're going to do? Like, that's it? Every, every tough challenge you face, you're just going to give up and avoid it? You can't do that. Can't do that in life. You've got to face something whether you win or lose. And Stark's like, yeah. And she's like, I don't think you're weaker than them at all. I love she smiles in that moment. She's like, you guys aren't underestimating yourselves. You've got this. As we see with Fern and Stark and them later, I I wish they would have got rid of the with rid of the Lunger guy, but nope, they didn't get rid of Lugner at all. And nor Lenny, so I wish they would have, but mm. And then Stark's like, please, I'm begging you. And she's like, she's like, peek, wait, wait. And then I like to, as Fern is dragging him away, and she's like, you don't know when to give up. Let's steal ourselves. I like that as he's being dragged away, Fern, Free Ren is like, I've been there. I've seen this scenario play out before, you know. And then she's like, in about 10 kilometers, we're being observed. And we see the scales, which are interesting, or the scales of the guillotine, right? We see all these knights with their bay with their spears and swords. And then we see this woman. Uh-huh. This demon. Yeah. She has the scales or the guillotine, one of the seven sages of destruction. She has like the very big dramatic fluffy things, you know? Also, I bet she's an effing Libra. <laughs> Just, just making out. She's like a door Delano. She's just an effing Libra. Yeah. And then Freerun, I hate fighting powerful opponents too. But then she smiles, right? She reminds me of Sheen from 86 when she does that. She just gives this smile. She's like, I hate fighting strong opponents. And she just smiles being like, all the more reason to finish this quickly. I'm like, do you hate fighting strong opponents, Freerun, or are you a natural at this and are just kind of, you know, being like, I get to fight. Okay. I don't like fighting strong opponents, but I'll do it because I have to and then go back to what I'm to whatever I need to do. Like Freerun is terrifying. She is kind of scary. And I what can we do? So yeah. So then we have Fern. I love that Fern just walks on the water to get to the other side. And, and Stark's like, you know, I had to wait through that water, Fern. If you had a, a spell that could dry me off real quick, that'd be real nice. No such luck. <laughs> I like that Fern gives him no, she gives him no time of day. She just like goes along her way and Stark's like, what's a guy got to do to get noticed around here? I love it. And then he like lifts, he like reaches out his hand to her to be the gentleman. And she just like floats away and he's like, son of a bitch. <laughs> And so they're like, why are we sneaking around? And she's like, well, we don't know the situation. So obviously this is the best way to go about it. So I like that. Um, I like that Qual, the elder sage of corruption, one of the seven is brought up. We've defeated him. So Aura is our second one of the seven we're facing. Curiouser and curiouser. I wonder if the elf and the OP is a sage of corruption. Don't know. Um, but we find out that they all specialize in a certain type of magic and they just keep perfecting it as time goes on. Kind of like Freerun, honestly. Freerun's been, you know, gathering up all these. Well, it's kind of like it, but it's not like it. Like Freerun has been developing the spell to kill demons and perfecting it. But unlike the demons who just practice and research this lone solitary form of magic, we see Freerun going out and collecting all these random spells that have nothing to do with each other. So it is a little different than the demons, but she's been refining this demon killing spell. So there is some correlation there, right? And he's like, in another 10 years, we'll be even stronger. So 
Free Rin, I'm sure Free Rin's MO is don't let demons stick around any longer than they need to because they will continue to get stronger and then it'll become a problem. So meanwhile, we have Flom, the legendary mage's defensive barrier has prevented demons from coming in, from invading and protected this town. What's so interesting is we see the barrier and we see like any dragon or demon or stuff that comes near just gets... And so then we see with Flom this representation of it where they were going through the snow and everything and she sees the little sprout and she chooses to protect it. And that's it. So I we don't know a lot about Flom yet. I'm curious what we're going to get with her. Um, from what I'm gathering, and we'll find out, I'm sure, as the series goes on, what I'm gathering is that Flom mainly, I mean, we know Flom is the, the modern day Prometheus of magic for humanity, but Flom has introduced um, magic to humanity, but also Flom seems more of a defensive mage, where Freerun is a slayer. They say Freerun the slayer who's been killing all these demons. Freerun is offensively attacking demons, whereas Flom seems like they were more into defensive magic and protecting things rather than fighting themselves. I could be wrong on that, but they seem more like a, a lover than a fighter, and Freerun is more of a fighter than a lover. <laughs> so, and that's when... He's like, they lack. I like that um, Lugner says he hates prodigies because demons are not geniuses. Demons are monsters. They're, they're creatures of accumulated effort. And there's a beauty to it. I like the idea of the beauty of accumulated effort. In any other series, that line, I'd be like, oh, hell yeah. Right? Um, and Freerun is a prodigy. Freerun's like a savant. Freerun is just like very, very, very strong without even trying. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's something akin to being an elf, since we only know Freerun as an elf, if the other elves are kind of like prodigies. or I, I'm curious if it's going to be like Lord of the Rings, where in Lord of the Rings, the elves are all kind of perfect. They're all kind of like perfect and perfect things. And they're like, yes, we're naturally amazing at everything. And it's like, okay, um, I don't know if that's going to be the case in this world or not, but... I do like Lugner developing this this disdain for Freerun because she's a genius and doesn't have the accumulated effort that he's had to build. But I would argue Freerun has built accumulated effort as well. So I am so excited to see what the... I'm excited to see what the fate is going to be of them because I honestly thought that Stark and Fern were going to kill Lugner in this episode and they didn't. So I'm curious what's going to be his fate. What's going to be Lenny's fate? I feel like it would have been a better idea to get rid of him, but but that didn't happen. They chose the count instead and to, to get out of there. So, mm. but in any case, I also like that the demons are very patient. They're like, we'll come back. Just give us time and we'll just keep torturing you till you give us the information. And meanwhile, Stark comes in there to save uh, the count. I do like the, the reference where the counts like my dead son was trembling before he headed off to battle so you remind me kind of of him. And I'm sure Stark is like, that's a really nice sentiment. And I like the thematic symbolism there. But also, your kid's dead. So maybe someone that's scared like me, this is the last thing you should be telling me. And he's like, I really don't want to know that. But okay. Which is funny. And I like that he's like, I can't cut the rope. So I'm just going to use the axe. Done. And so they, they make mention of the amulet that if you have it, you can get pretty much anywhere in the castle and the guards will let you through. So I'm very curious if this little amulet, if Stark is going to take it and use it in the next episode, if needed. I wonder if he's going to take it and keep it. I don't know. I wonder if it has something to do with the barrier, the necklace. It looks like maybe it could be tied to Flom. I don't know. I don't know. Very interested to know what, what ends up happening with it. And then I do like the little, like the little dialogue that, that the count has where he's like, you know, you're not supposed to be talking to me like this. I, it's very informal, but given the circumstances, I'll let it go this once. Like, I love the dialogue between the characters in the show. It's so natural, but it still feels like it's part of a medieval fantasy. It's, it's really, really cool. And that's when Lugner and Lenny show up and she's like, a rat. Oh, and again, again, Lugner's not even looking 
at Stark. He's looking at the Count. And Stark puts himself in the way and he's like, no, I am not going to move. I love it. I love him being fast. And he gets a good swipe at Lugner, but Lugner having blood powers is not something you want to do that. You want to, like, cut that head off and, and let it go. You know, although if you've watched Attack on Titan, I wonder if you cut the head off if something would happen to reconnect it. <laughs> Maybe! Who knows? We'll have to find out. But I'm the hand coming out and being the blood, oh, love it. Absolutely love it. I like, honestly, I have all these character ideas for stories in my head. And there is one that I have where someone can like manipulate their blood and it like becomes these hands out of their body. So I have a feeling if I write that down and ever get it out published, they're gonna be like, you stole from Free Run. And I'm like, look, I've had this idea in my head for 10 years. So did the creator of Free Run. I'm sure it's been done before, but I just, I love that. I'm glad that Stark's arm is the only thing that gets hurt. I'm glad that not his actual body is hurt. That's really good. And I, I just love that Stark's like, uh, it felt like such a berserk moment, like a Guts and Casca moment where Stark was like, oh, alone? Oh, I'm just buying time for, for this badass behind me. It felt like a Stark and, like, felt like a Guts and Casca moment. And I was like, yes, loving it. And then a mage. And he looks up and just gets, uh, he didn't get hit head on though. Like, girl's aim still could be improved. He got, you know... He got an effect from Jujutsu Kaisen. That's all I'll say, but he manages to live through it. Um, real quick, Jujutsu Kaisen spoilers. I feel like he got the Toji treatment, but because he's voiced by Sukuna's voice actor, he was fine. Ah! Ah! End of Jujutsu Kaisen spoilers. I just had to say that real quick or it was going to drive me crazy. But yeah, a human... A human mage, a mere human mage evaded Lenny's detection. Also, yeah, you know, Fern has a very free run like coldness to her gaze when she looks at them. Like, Fern takes all of free run's magic and advice seriously. And I like Stark's like, oh, hey, how you doing? Nice of you to show up. And like, what is this spell? And she's like, oh, it's just Zoltrak. You know, it's in your magic system. And Lugner's like, no, we did the exact same hum thing humanity did half a century ago. We figured out Zoltrak and got over it. And she's like, well, that's not my problem. And then they manage to retreat. They get the count and go to try to save his life before. But yeah, his blood being on. Okay, those two is the count and Stark. Okay, I was like, his blood wasn't ever on Fern, but they're on the count and Stark. And that's why. Oh, no, there is blood on her robe. Damn it. Okay. Fine. They're going to use it to track them. Okay. And that's where Lugner remembers Fern. And we see, like, we see this, like, army, all of this. And Lugner's sitting there. And she just looks so cold. Like, the way that she stares down at him. Oh, it's, it's, it's chilling. Her gaze. The question is, why did he survive? Like, how is he able to survive in that moment? That's the question. How is he able to get past her? That we don't know. I want to take a picture of that. So that's going to be curious if we find out. And then, yeah, she shows up right in front of Aura. Mm -hmm. Yep, she's slewn more demons than anyone else in history. Freerun the Slayer. Ooh, I say that the necklace looks like it could be related to Flom because it seems like it's maybe made from the same material as the earrings that Freerun took from Flom, but I don't know. That's really curious. Hmm. In any case, I'm very curious to know how Freerun, I'm guessing maybe a demon killed Flom and that's why Freerun has gone on a rampage the last 800 years. Or thousand years. I, I'm assuming we're going to find out. I'm assuming we're going to see Free Ren versus Aura uh, battle this entire army while uh, Fern and Stark take care of uh, Lugner and Lenny, but we're just going to have to wait and see, I guess. But this episode was really, really good. It was just a lot of action, a lot of setup, a lot of getting ready for the next episode giving us little bits and pieces and clues about the mystery behind everything. 
it was really good. So <laughs> I really enjoyed it and I hope you all did too. So in any case, um, I'm really excited. I can't wait to see what's going to happen next. But uh, in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yeah, I'll be back real soon with more free run. Bye.